Hi, welcome to the Piano Podcast. I'm Mario O'Hara. This is part two of my video series covering reduced sized keyboards. In part one, we saw Dr. Carol Leone perform a little bit on the reduced sized keyboard and talk about the benefits of its use for pianists with smaller hands. And there's been a lot of interesting discussion on the internet going on among pianists and teachers since I released that first video. It's piqued quite a bit of interest in pianists with smaller hands. But seriously, on the Piano Pedagogy email discussion list, Betsy Stocksdale said, quote, This may be the wave of the future. I hope it is because so many people would do better with a smaller instrument. Over on Facebook, Hugh Sung from the Curtis Institute in Philadelphia said, This type of keyboard is truly revolutionary and long overdue. Just a little further down, Katrina Pack asks, When was the first 7 8 keyboard built? Well, Katrina, you can find out about the whole history of the 7 8 keyboard at www.steinbuehler.com. According to the site, in 1991, David Steinbuehler came across Christopher Donison's custom-made 7 8 size keyboard in his concert grand piano, and it inspired him so much that he decided to work on building these reduced size keyboards. In 1994, David Steinbuehler built his first keyboard with what they called the DS standard, or what uh, it stands for the Donison Steinbuehler standard. So in today's episode, I'd like to share some video of some pianists who were trying out the 7 8 keyboard for the first time at the National Conference on Keyboard Pedagogy, and also an interesting study performed at Bob Jones University in Greensville, South Carolina. Hi, I'm here at the National Conference on Keyboard Pedagogy with Anita Renfro. Yeah. How are you? Hi. <laughs> uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Anita? Um, I teach piano. I'm director of keyboard studies at Millersville University, and have a great love for the piano. At times, I'm very frustrated when I practice because I wish my fingers were about an inch longer. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my first time to even touch the 7 8 keyboard mm -hmm. and I find this fascinating because normally I play a ninth and with a lot of effort I can stretch a tenth but not with a note in, in the middle. Mm -hmm. And on this piano I can play the tenths easily. possibilities, um, not only for myself, but for my students who have small hands and who get frustrated trying to reach to play full chords, especially distances that are a little bit over um, the octave. The most difficult part that I see is trying to accomplish arpeggiated figures because I am used to the distances there. So. Overshoot right. if I do that. Cool. And it's very comfortable to do the octave, and you can feel the full, the arpeggios. If I get used to the distances, it will be much easier to play because the hand can stay rounded more. Arpeggios would be uh, um, much easier, I think, to play mm -hmm. and less tiring because the hand can stay in a much more uh, arched position than normal. And uh, Schubert sonatas or Beethoven sonatas that have the tenths would be easier uh, to reach. And especially the Romantic literature that has lots of big grasp would be much easier to play. Um, by uh, with this piano. <laughs>
interested enough to want to pursue this a little bit more mm -hmm. for the university. Hi, I'm here at the National Conference on Keyboard Pedagogy at the uh, Poster Research Sessions. And here we have Sarah Evans Sarah. and Sarah uh, and Peter Davis. Peter Davis, why don't you come on in here? <laughs> and T, as you can see, Peter is much taller. They performed uh, actual uh, research study on the uh, Guinness adaptability to use the 7 8 reduced size keyboard. So. Our research was about the side eights piano, and the keys are seven eights of the size of a standard piano. And what we researched was how easily piano majors were able to adapt to this smaller keyboard. So what we did our research design. We had five students learn um, a set of pieces that Chopin preludes, a scale, an arpeggio, a piece of their choice, and some sight reading exercises. And the sight reading, of course, was not prepared ahead of time. But they learned all these things on a standard piano. And then when they came in the first day, we recorded this, these sets of pieces on a standard piano. Immediately after that, they played that set of pieces on a 7 8 piano. And as you can see here, these first two bars show their score out of a score of 100. So subject 5 got about an 80% or a B- on those, on those pieces. Right after that, when he recorded on the 7 8 piano, as you can see, their first attempt was about 10 points lower, so he lost um, a whole letter grade. After that, they practiced on the 7 8 piano for an hour a day, and this is how they split up their time practicing. And at the end of the five days, we recorded again on the 7 8 piano, and you can see here on that last line that most of them gained an average of 13 points between the pre-test on the 7 8 and the post-test. Which leads us to believe that there really isn't um, too much trouble in adapting. My personal experience that I found was that for pianists with small hands, such as myself, uh, the octaves were the hardest thing initially with overshooting, but that once your brain actually adjusts very quickly. And what I liked was that the, the technique that my teachers were trying to teach me with chords and octaves and arpeggios, which is awkward generally on a standard piano, suddenly makes sense and it fits very comfortably. And I can see benefits for this with, with small-handed pianists and injury reduction and in teaching and things, um, teaching proper technique for students with smaller hands or even for regular students and demonstrating back and forth on the different pianos.